Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. There's I see you've got your books on show. Well, these are orig these are original books. These are not fake book shelf. <laughs> these are original. <laughs> what That's do you what I need? I need to get a fake bookshelf. Yeah, what do you have behind you? Just wardrobes, cupboards. <laughs> okay. You look, uh it's a an honor and privilege to have my seventh wife with me here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Well, we have lots to talk about. Uh, yes, we but, do. And um, well, you've done, I'm sure you've done, you've done this before, so I don't need to tell you, but you know how my mind operates as well. It's going to be easy going, you know, we'll just enjoy ourselves and we'll know when to finish because I love yeah. the art of conversation. Like a married couple. Like a married couple. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll make a start. Um, lots to say. You, you got my email, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So let's look at that. You're Which looking, one? You're looking, you're looking wonderful on a Sunday. Oh, thank you. So are you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I just bought this uniform, not because of coming to America, but I just decided I need to change my uniform. <laughs> well, I just have to ask you something. I can see cutouts at the back. Is that the cutout of your suit? No, it is not. It is not. This is for something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're very observant. This is for something else. I get that a lot. A lot of people talk about that. So let me let me let me make the start now. So I'm going to start recording. Enjoy yourself. Let's free flow in. You've got some subjects I need to talk to you about, but we'll just we'll just go for it. Okay. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am so happy to be here. Look, I have to say to you that uh, I have mixed feelings, really mixed feelings, because uh, uh, for my audience, uh, viewers, and listeners. Uh, coming to America came out uh, yesterday and uh, a lot of people have been congratulating me for one reason or the other. They have been congratulating me because they think I, I, I wasn't coming to America. And it's usually white people who have been sending me messages, not black people, white people sending me messages <laughs> saying, ah, well done, you are coming to America. But coming to America is going to be a subject that I, we need to discuss today. Look, with no further ado, I want to introduce you to someone who I have known for years. I'm talking years, yes, yes, yes. You know, my, my people said, oh, you don't have that many uh, women as guests because I always feel that most women are in the kitchen cooking for their husband. But <laughs> today, <laughs> today I have Ujambi Migrat. She, I have to say to you that if you are aware of what's happening in the comedy scene right now, even though she's based in the UK, and if you've never heard of Unjambi Migrat, then you shouldn't really be watching or listening comedy. I mean, I met her well over 12 years ago, and it is really lovely to see how she has progressed and she's doing pretty well. You know, I, I, I was looking at her CV. I have to say to you that, you know, if I start reading her CV, we could be here for another 15 minutes, just reading her <laughs> CV out. But, you know, she is a Natty winner, New Acts of the Year winner. I think it was last year or the year before, uh, because I, the reason why I can't remember, you know, lockdown, I've been under house arrest by this civilian prime minister, and I don't know the day and the time. But also, you know, she's written books, she is doing extremely well. And you hear people talk about, oh, there are no female comedians who, she is doing fantastically well. And uh, she supported me uh, two years, it's now two years ago, two years ago, there was a coup, an attempted coup, just like coming to America, I've done an attempted coup. There was a coup by BBC Studios and E4, and you know, Injabi was instrumental in supporting me during that time that I was in Edinburgh. It feels like uh, almost like four or five years ago, but we had a fantastic time. We had audience with President Bonjo, she played my wife, and we had, we had a great time. And look at where we are now. You know, I genuinely thought by now I will be on Life at the Apollo, but I am on Zoom doing a podcast and I'm about to introduce you to Unjambi. So there's a lot we're going to talk about. I know she's not afraid to hold a conversation. Unjambi, how are you? It's been a long time. How is it going? Well, Obonjo, well, thanks very much for that very grand introduction. Uh, it, it's going, you know, life under house arrest. We all know what it feels like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it, it, it's amazing. It's a double-edged sword, you know, it's a double-edged sword because, um, Obviously, uh, all our gigs are gone. Um, we haven't been able to do any shows for a really long time. So the comedy side of thing has kind of been on hold. But then, you know, like the one thing that I really always wanted to do uh, was to have space 
to write with nowhere to go so I could write. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this lockdown has actually given me all the space in the world to, to write. So I have been indulging myself in just writing because I love writing. I love playing with words and having duels with my characters and just, it, it's fun. It's, it's like I'm having a party in my own room <laughs> with all my characters and there's no lockdown in my mind. Mm. Tell, tell us about the book. So you've written, there's one book that's come out that's doing well. Tell us about the book. Oh, so the one that's out, I'm not even afraid to show is right here. This book is called Through the Leopard's Gaze. So th this is a, is a, is a memoir. It's a, about me and my family growing up in Kenya and all the wars of, um, you know, colonialism and, and tribulation in neo-colonialist uh, setup and all of that stuff. So that's my memoir that has already been published. So it's been published exactly a year. So that was published just before we went on lockdown um, last year. And uh, since then, I'm, uh, I've just been writing a, another book, actually two books, <laughs> kind of two books simultaneously. So uh, this book is uh, called A Slice of God. And, uh, you know, I won't give too much away because I'm, I'm still working on it, but it's kind of set again in Kenya uh, in neo-colonial times with all the chaos that was left behind because, you know, Africa is a mess because of colonialism. So uh, this, this is uh, about people in uh, uh, neo-colonial times in Kenya. So that's that's um, my next book. And I kind of, I in the first draft, I could combine two stories, but then I decided those stories are not going to work together. So I split them. So then that one, I, I'm gonna make it into a children's book. So I, I haven't, I've kind of written it, but it needs a, 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 a refined draft. Okay, so you- so that, you, That's you, what I've been doing. Okay, excellent, well done. Uh, are you, so you, you are definitely, uh, a Kenyan. What happened yes. to your Kenyan accent? You sound so British. Do I? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, um, I I suppose it's to do with the schools that I attended because uh, I the school that I attended has a very long history. It is the school that was attended uh, by the Kenyan first president, Jomo Kenyatta. So it, Jomo Kenyatta was uh, uh, one of the students in the school and obviously not at the same time when I attended, <laughs> you know. So, um, so that that was a really good school. Um, we were only ever allowed to speak English, never to speak our native languages, and and that is to the detriment of the Kenyan children, uh, yeah. because uh, schools in Kenya still has have, still bear that colonial mentality that you're not allowed to speak your native languages, and as a result, it does it does a lot of damage to the native languages, and I. Um, and the reason it was a boarding school, so most of my life I've been in boarding school, and that again is, uh, I mean, it, it, it's been good in a way for me because I'm able to converse and write um, very, I hope, eloquently in, in uh, English language and everything. But what it did to me was it, it, it detribalized me and a lot of other children to an extent that we, I'm only just now learning about my culture through books and, and reading and research. And that's quite painful. I found that really difficult to accept when I started to do the research to find out just how rich my culture was, just to find out just how amazing, you know, the stories, the morals, everything that are believing God, because, you know, like they, 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 uh, like they say that Africans did not believe in God. Like we, we the Gekoyo people, because I'm Gekoyo, we believed in our God who is omnipresent. And our God lives in heaven, you know, and our God has utterly residence in uh, the four holy mountains in Kenya. And these holy mountains, one of them is called Mount Kenya now, but it was never called Mount Kenya. It was called the holy mountain of brightness. So all of our culture and all of our history has been masked by colonialism. And it's so sad because it is actually a very rich culture. So uh, why is my accent this way? Because I, I came to the UK when as a teenager. So my accent is, I don't think it's purely British. It doesn't sound purely British. People think I, I'm French actually, when, I don't know oh, why. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I speak to people, they're like, oh, well, you're French. And it's like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, mm -hmm. possible. It's all I can say in French. <laughs> it's really interesting because when you were just describing how you're only just discovering your culture, I, I also feel that way. I was brought up 
in an environment where it was English, almost like uh, my father felt like he was from Eton, you know, it was almost like, yeah. and then, yeah. and I, I, I grew up and finding out that it, oh, the best way to describe it is like you, someone telling you that there's Father Christmas and then yeah. eventually there's no Father Christmas. There's no, you, you just what I'm saying, you're discovering yeah. things. And yeah. I, it was, it's, so, it's such a, it's, it's a tragedy, but I think for us, the fact that we are now in a unique position where we've got platforms where yes. we can correct that, of course. I think that, that has to be a beautiful thing. Question it I was going to, go on. It is a beautiful thing. And actually it has given me a lot to talk about. So when I do my show, I, I talk about my, my, my tribe, my culture, because like currently the portrayal of Africans are people who are narrow-minded, who are, mm. but when you think like, in places like Uganda in the 1800s, they used to perform cesarean sections and women survived it. You know, if you look at the medicine, they used to do brain surgery, they open. I even came across a video, a very old video that was, they actually were, were doing brain surgery on mm. a guy sitting down. Uh, and all of this, we, our medicine was advanced and of course everything was trampled. Um, and we are supposed to be backward and everything, but our outlook on things. And then what I've been studying lately is uh, the hieroglyphics that my tribe used. We mm. used to have a, a, a very unique, um, it's not even a hieroglyphics. It is a, a, a very unique handwriting. It looks mm. a little bit like a short shortcut, yeah, not shortcut, mm. what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, like the secretaries used to, shorthand. It looks a yeah. bit like shorthand. Okay. Um, so we even had our own written language, but because we didn't have books, we just used to write on ornaments. Mm. We used to write on uh, like talking sticks and on mm. gourds and all of these things. So we don't have books per se. Mm. And this is why people think that we, we didn't have a language. We did not have literacy. We did have literacy, a very advanced literacy, but mm. everything was trampled for, for, you know, for Englishness. Yeah. Do you, do you think that, uh, because certainly in Nigeria, it's, 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 certainly what I've picked up, especially with terms of the music and parts of the culture, they're trying to redress that balance to go back to what it was. Is that the same in Kenya? Yeah, yeah. So you, so now we have like uh, uh, Gekoyo radio stations. Mm -hmm. We have Gekoyo radio, we have um, um, Gekoyo music. So mm -hmm. like um, you, you have Facebook pages dedicated mm -hmm. to Gekoyo. So like I, I'm in several of these pages and they, mm -hmm. they talk about customs and the way we did things and yeah people are recognizing because a lot of people feel vacant so like we are born but you kind of there's a, a vagueness about your background which mm -hmm. is weird mm -hmm. and I addressed that in my book because I, I was like I always felt that there was something but I didn't know what it was so like in Kenya they don't talk about uh, the, the Mau Mau uh, what happened during the Mauma and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. it's not spoken about mm -hmm. but p people know that they trauma but they don't talk about the trauma mm -hmm. uh, and um uh, and this is the thing a lot of people feel it a lot of people uh, are actually traumatized by it so but then also we don't go to the our culture like we did before so people are like in a really weird zone so like i like i say i i just i found it very tra traumatic mm -hmm. this whole thing very traumatic mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's been redressed. Yeah. So you're a comedian. Mm -hmm. You write books. Yes. Which do you prefer? They, they do different things. A book gives you space to describe and talk about what, mm. what you are and mm. all of that stuff. Comedy gives you a platform to narrate your story mm. in sound bites, mm. in, in a very concise way. Mm and in an engaging way because people are laughing, but people mm. are laughing, but you're still taught, you know, telling them about your stuff. Mm. So, I mean, they're very different platforms and I, I, I don't know that I can choose one over the other. Mm. You know, it feels very different when you're on stage and people are laughing. It also feels very different when I have my own space and I'm thinking and an idea comes or my story flows and my mm. characters get on or don't mm. get on or whatever. It feels just as amazing. So I know there are transferable skills because you have to, it's not just being a performer as a comedian, you have to be a good writer as well. Yeah. And it's the same with, you know, being being an author, you know, you, 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 you write books. But what about in terms of the audience? Because obviously, you know, that with audiences, when you perform, you get instant, you know, uh, reaction from from your fans or from people who just you just won over how is it it's definitely not the same when people are reading your books and saying how wonderful they they they, they found the story 
well you do get big feedback with books as well yeah uh, you know uh, so people read a book and they don't keep quiet about it mm. so they they let us say oh i love this book you know, oh it's, it's, it was interesting oh things mm. i didn't know and this is why i guess reviews are for mm. it's obviously not as instant as um as um comedy because comedy is instant you tell a joke bam, bam land, yeah, you yeah. know you know it's working or it's not working with a book mm. you have to go through four years for people to <laughs> say, mm. so it's yeah it, it, it's obviously very different but then once it's done people do review so mm. people do do read it and they give a review and when people give a review you know where whether they've read it or not mm. sometimes you know um yeah, so it, it, it's kind of the same. People people do talk to their friends about it. I know quite a few groups, uh, like uh, it has been used a lot in um, in uh, reading clubs mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and that's amazing because if people are reading it and discussing it in a book club and everything, then it just means that, you know, there's a story to tell and then it's, it's uh, shared and, you know, word of mouth and all of that. And that's great. And you have, you also have some good news about what one of your books is going to be turned into a film is that correct into a tv series uh, yeah nice when is when is that happening do you know i can't say much oh, okay <laughs> okay okay you know how these things work well, yeah 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 but, but is, yeah, it, in the, is it going to be in the uk or in the us um probably you know how these things work you know it's, yeah. if, if it's released on a, a platform mm -hmm. is is uh, available in so many different places yeah, yeah. yeah well done well done well done oh, thank you let's start with uh coming to america coming to america too i don't know whether you've had the chance to watch it uh, I have. what is your view i would tell you my view but i want to hear your view first uh you know like i i love uh the first coming to america i, I mean the, i watched it countless times and i was still in hysterics and i you know i just it just never got old for me so when this came out i was like oh i can't wait oh i can't wait oh i can't wait <laughs> And then started watching it and I was like, what? <laughs> what was that about? What? Come on, you know, like, fine. You know, the film employed so many people. They they gave loads of actors and mm. loads of black people parts and stuff like that. But they could have asked me to write a plot for them. I could have written a much better plot. And I, I, I yeah, th there wasn't much of a plot there. You know, it, they, they just, it's as though someone said, hey, on a drunken night, hey, shall, shall we do Coming to America too? And they were like, yeah, yeah, like, let's do it. They're like, oh, hang on. We started shooting. What was the plot? And it's like, um, let's say this, let's say this. So there were, I, I don't think that they spent much time, you know, coming mm. up with the plot. Maybe maybe the lesson is never to film what, during a pandemic because it, <laughs> <laughs> maybe could it, it could be. Uh, certainly for me, I just yeah. thought that, uh, this man is getting broke, so he has 10 children, so he has to see care of his family. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> There's no way. But my observations were this. I, I was, apart from, the, the first film was 30 years ago, so I, I wasn't expecting it to be uh, to match what happened 30 years ago. But the world has changed. All I remember, of of all the world has changed. We, we've, we've evolved. We now have uh, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda, yeah. you know, and the, as far as I'm concerned, I, we, we, you know how we black people are. A film comes out immediately. It's like, oh, the film is out. And then within five, 10 minutes, I was yeah. looking at it. I said, what is this? Yeah. What is this? What is exactly? What is this? Exactly. And the, th the thing that disturbed me most is like you said, it happened 30 years ago. 30 years ago, uh, probably <clears throat> people were not aware of issues like, you know, drugging people and raping them. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that kind of is the main plot that Eddie Murphy got drugged and he, he was raped. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know yeah. of, I, number one, I don't know of an African king <laughs> who will admit that he has a bastard son. <laughs> I, I am not aware of an African general who walks yeah. the way uh, Wesley Snipes walked, like, you know, like that. For that, the interest. So, that was so insulting to Africans. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the point I was going to make is this, yeah. my sister. With the vast resources that we've got, because as far as I'm concerned, that film that they made recently is from an African-American perspective. Yeah. And, and, and I bless my Nigerian <laughs> people because they were all rejoicing. Oh, Davido, you you might know, he's an Afrobeat uh, musician. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's he's in he's in coming to America, and he was only for two minutes. Now I want to challenge Nollywood if they're hearing this. Why can't we film something like that in Nigeria, and then African Americans coming back to their 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 where you know their continent 
to understand the culture. I mean, the African accents, for example, I'm sorry. Ah, I'm sorry, insulting. It's, it's, no, and, and this but you, is, know what, you know what was most insulting for me is when Wesley Slipes uh, is, is, you know, in his land mm. uh, with all these children holding mm. AK-47s mm. and telling them, go and play with your grenades. Mm. That is a awful uh, because these children, you know, child soldiers, those mm. were abused uh, soldiers, and yeah. they're reinforcing the stereotypes that about these child soldiers. The way he's dressed like this, this general, uh, you know, wearing all this commando stuff. This is this is exactly what white films have done to us for you so know, long. And, and there's every likelihood, based on where I live, a white neighborhood, because coming to America is all over the place, that there is going to be a white person one day who's going to mimic uh, what he saw in uh, <laughs> coming to America. You know. I, I was disappointed, but yeah. but I yeah I was disappointed to to, to see that um you know these these black Americans in in Hollywood are not really interested in the African culture because if they were they would have taken time to really inform themselves that a that is re reinforcing stereotypes. But but Despite you could you, but you could give them some credit in terms of uh, Black Panther because Black Panther had some real serious messages. Uh, oh, but I mean, but Black Panther is a completely different ballgame. I'm, mm. I'm talking specifically, I mean, th there are some fantastic movies and mm. I, I cannot generalize about, uh, you know, about Black Americans and, and mm. I don't want to do that actually. Mm. Mm. But if that film itself, that they didn't, that what they did was uh, basically stereotyping. They just used white people ideas about Africans mm. uh, all the generals and child soldiers and the AK-47s and all mm. of this. Mm. And th that I, I, I was, pretty offended by that I, mm. I just I felt bad because I you know I'm a fan of all the people in the film mm. you know but but um are they a fan of Africa really and Africa has been portrayed in such a horrible negative light mm. and for them to actually perpetuate it I, I I was quite disappointed by it yeah yeah but anyway um the the, the, the reviews are not from the professional reviews to the unprofessional reviews I think people professional reviews are giving them two stars three stars I wonder what Steve Bennett would have given them if he if it was a comedy, if it was an Eddie Rogue show. But also from the unprofessional reviewers, these are people who watched it. It's mixed. It's mixed. But um, uh, like I said, uh, the guy is getting broke, needs some money, secure his children. You know, it's a family <laughs> reunion. Get friends and family. Lo lovely attire, I must say. Lovely, lovely attire. But, yeah, uh, so they, they did good for the costume department. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, 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 the outfits are kind of from Utopia. Uh, a lot of them show, show, showing Ethiopian culture, apparently. That's what I uh, But what, what surprised me most is why he had the Kenyan flag. You know the uh, the son, the bastard son? Yeah. He, he, he was carrying the Kenyan flag. Mm. So maybe he's Kenyan. Yeah, he had a, it's possible. He, yeah, it's he possible. had a Kenyan flag when he was going to kill the lion. He had the, li the Kenyan oh, flag. Oh, so he, I, I didn't even watch it all to get it to that point. But he oh, killed, really? He I, killed, I watched killed, everything. So he killed the lion. Uh, he killed the lion. <laughs> no, sorry, he wasn't going to kill the lion. He was going to cut the whiskers of, okay. of the lion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, and um and uh, so he had a, a Kenyan flag on him. Do you? And I'm do, like, oh, is he Kenyan? <laughs> do you think they filmed it during the pandemic or before? I think it was before. It must have been before. You think so? There's no way you can get all those people, and uh, you know they're still alive. <laughs> 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 Because I was just no, thinking, too many people. I was thinking, there's no social distance in here. Even the wedding, I just thought, geez, geez. Yeah, but, yeah. but let's move on. Let's move on. We we, we wish them well. We wish them well. I'm yeah, not. I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not bitter that I wasn't involved. I just find it really ridiculous that you know they had this military Af African general dancing that, that, that way. That offended me. And I just yeah, thought. That, yeah. <laughs> that offended me. And that I think those are the roles. I can't remember exactly what Wesley Snipes has done exactly, but I mm. think he has played similar roles for white films uh, mm. uh, as a general. So mm. he he probably just brought what he has done into all of this. Yeah. And which countries in Africa are run by generals? Yeah. Like the only ones are the Congo, and the Congo that's because of the diamonds, which are yes, yes, and it's full of all sorts of people. And and, and there was one, right. and there was one where um, when he, uh, I think Eddie Murphy was introduced as Idi Amin Idiot when he, he came back to Africa. There was reference of my late father, Idi Amin. And, <laughs> but you, you are not aware of this. I, I've been in touch with Idi Amin's son, Jaffa Amin, for real, yes, because I'm trying to get him onto my podcast. And one of the things he said was, because he's defending his father's uh, legacy, and he said that he's very upset. Oh, hang on. With, uh, 
He's defending his father's legacy. Yes. <laughs> well, but, but interesting enough, there are some really, uh, because he's been sending me lots of information. So before he turned the corner, yeah. Idi Amin had really great intentions for his people before something happened when he so, well it. true 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 because yeah, i yeah. i know i know about the situation with the palestinian um, yeah 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 exactly the, the just so, and even you just have to look at some of his speeches in the uh, the the un he was talking about america having a black vice president he was talking about getting rid of appetite in south africa those were really yeah. good policies just i'm saying okay, but yeah. some, something happened along the way but anyway he was basically saying to me that one of the things he dislikes about his father's legacy is that they've turned him into this comedy buffoon. You know, everyone pokes fun. And and, and, and I was, I, <laughs> then I said, he's not going to be happy when he sees coming to America because they made reference of, you know, our dad, uh, Idi Amin Dada, you know, but um, there we go. Let's move on. Let's move on. There's lots to talk about. I want yeah, to- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I, on. I, I, I really want to know what, exactly what he's going to defend about his father. Yes, his father said a few a few things that you know, like like the defense of uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, you mm -hmm. know, and also he he questions why uh, the the British brought um, Indians to Asians to work in in East Africa. Well, yeah. Africans could have done that job. So yeah, mm -hmm. he did that, but but he killed very many people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but you see, one of the things he said to me because. When I made contact with him, it was he was bombarding me with information for almost two days with photos of the dad, um, uh, stories, UN speeches. And one of the things he said, that Obonjo, I want you. He called me my ex, your, your excellency. He said, he said, Obonjo, I want to for you to understand the African narrative. So he's basically saying that some of these films that were produced, uh, King of Scotland, Last King of Scotland, and all these other yeah. films. Yeah. They they didn't really portray his father in a not they, they weren't a true reflection of what actually happened. The film should be made well, in Africa. And well, the, the thing yeah. is, I know a fair bit about Idi Amin because my mm. father used to have a business in Kampala. Okay, okay. And, and and if you read my book, it does actually talk about about that. Yeah, yeah. During yeah, yeah. Idi Amin's time, yeah. And Idi Amin, he used to work. I tell you what, he used to do. Mm -hmm. He used to work for the British Army for 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 the the. Uh, uh, King's African Rifles mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. and he tortured a lot of people in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's nothing that his son can say that can change anything because he himself, yes, he may be, may, may he may have ha an African um, vision or whatever, mm -hmm. but he killed many Africans by torture. Mm -hmm. he, he would literally like push through his hands and rip out somebody's heart. Mm -hmm. There's no way this guy is a Pan-Africanist. The, the many Africans he killed, mm -hmm. there's no way he can be a Pan-Africanist. Okay. I, I'm not here to defend my father, but anyway, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love, I, I, I can't wait to have Jaffa Amin on the podcast. And I think it will be- Listen, yeah, yeah, I would you should to. have the three of us on there because I would like, you know, they nearly killed my dad. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Yeah, they nearly killed my dad. So, like, my dad, when he would be on the train mm -hmm. coming from Kampala, he would see all the all the uh, the train the the, the uh, there were like all the trees mm -hmm. along the railway tracks. There were people who who were hanging. Mm -hmm. There were there were all lots of people hanging from trees being hung mm -hmm. on the train, so that people on the trains can actually see all the people mm -hmm. who have been killed. Mm -hmm. It was awful. I feel so bad for, for the for the people of Uganda. That was a horrific time. Uh, and and they, uh, just, they don't seem to have recovered because you, you now they, have Museveni who's there and who refused, who's Donald Trump, who's refusing to, to actually leave, even though apparently he lost the election, but he's, he's been there for years. Well, you know what? You know what, Obonjo? Um, uh, uh, <sighs> Uganda seems I, well. I, I don't know a great deal, but it seems to have made some some sort of progress in that uh, there's there's uh, some sort of peace yeah. in, in the country. Yeah. Um, but when you think about it, a democracy in Africa is very 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 difficult. It really is because if you look at if you look at uh, say for example all the tribes that have to try and come together and mm. work and live together, the Buganda Kingdom was an actual kingdom by itself. Mm, mm. So. Mm. It, it put to put it into context, it's like if you took the the, the United Kingdom, yeah, mm -hmm. and you put them with Russians and Bulgarians, and you tell them you're mm -hmm. a country, mm -hmm. so please try and run this country fairly and square. Mm -hmm. It's pretty difficult. Like they it is it really is so so difficult because like even the problems we have in Kenya, mm -hmm. 
you know, you see like uh, the Maasai are nomadic, mm. the Luos are fishermen, mm. the Gekoyo are farmers, mm. and we're supposed to come together in unity and shared goals. Mm. It's like, we are so completely different. Mm. And this is, this is a problem with democracy in Africa because it wasn't designed by us. The architects were people who had never even seen Africa. Yeah, I, I call it a kidney transplant that's gone horribly wrong. We, we need... <laughs> That's what I call it. I so just call people it, yeah. say, so people saying that, okay, fine, I'm no fan of Museveni, mm. but, but under Museveni's reign, it has been the longest peace in Uganda because Uganda was a bloodbath. After, after mm. uh, Amin, there was Obote, there was so much, those people just like suffered so much. Yes, you know? yes, so, yes. So the democracy, you've seen how fraught democracy is, even in America, mm. even, even in, in the UK. Oh, the democracy, let's, Let's not start. Let's not start. Yeah, let's not start. Uh, let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, Meghan and Harry and the documentary coming up soon. Are you going to watch it? Yes. What, what time? I don't know whether we would. Uh, it's tomorrow what? at nine o'clock, Bonjo. <laughs> nine o'clock at night. I thought it was even this evening. This evening? I thought no, it was I this evening. No. Okay. Oh, I'll double check. I don't want to miss it. Well, so, normally so, I, I, sorry, go on. Go on, go on. Normally I don't watch royal stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not really interested in them. So why, but, why, why do you want to watch this one? Why are you so curious? Be, because I have become curious because the media has gone into complete meltdown. Mm -hmm. So I want to see what it is that she has done. Because as far as I know, she, she it doesn't show anywhere what she commit crime she has committed. She, she hasn't been unfaithful to her husband. She hasn't, and so I don't know why she's getting so much hate. Well, she, um, she's committed a crime. She's a black woman married to, uh, to, to married into the royal family. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so this is it. So I, I'm just gonna watch it because now it's, it's whetted my appetite because mm. I've seen she, she, you know, the other newspapers are saying she has betrayed the queen and everything. Mm. And I wanted to know what she did to betray the queen and everything mm. because mm. I, I'm curious now, I'm gonna watch it just to know what she has done because like I didn't know she had done anything mm -hmm. and, and, and for me I, 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 I posted on Twitter today and there's some people attacking me you know it is so ridiculous because there are people who are actually saying that uh, Harry has offended the Queen and so they should revoke his uh, British citizenship can you imagine what, what did he do to the Queen well uh, well he married a black woman as far as I'm concerned that's 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 probably the offense uh, but but, know, but I am assuming that she was okay with it because the queen was present during the wedding because I saw her. I actually saw the wedding. Uh, haven't you been? To, haven't you been to some first we some weddings where mother-in-law and father-in-law are not happy, but they have to go ahead because the man is headstrong. But to be honest with you, Obonjo, hand on your heart, how many people do you know that get on perfectly with their mothers-in-law? None. No, but none. <laughs> <laughs> A few, maybe one percent. One percent. One percent. My mother-in-law, like she, she, like she didn't even hide it for me. She told me, she told me, she told me that when I found out my son was marrying a woman from Africa, I was horrified, and I was like, "Cheers, thanks. Can I have another potato?" And you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you think you think because that was that was that was a public marriage in display, uh, and it had to be Harry. There couldn't be anyone else who would who would go outside <laughs> and marry someone else he fell in love it is obvious that he fell in love but one of the things i i i, I two things for me uh, when i spoke to my mom today uh who's currently in nigeria she she said oh when, when are they showing it because uh, she's a fan of uh, princess diana and and, oh. and, and 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 i remember when diana died and she called me from nigeria and she was screaming ah they've killed her they've killed her they've <laughs> killed her. <laughs> you know wow. uh, but the way they are now behaving you know, because there's, there's, there's a conspiracy theory about Harry, there's a conspiracy theory about Meghan, you know, about Diana, that it's quite possible that, you know, they are reinforcing those theories about... Yeah, but you know, if they had made such a big fuss about it, I, I don't think people would even want to watch it. You yeah. know, people would know, oh, okay, I think they're going to talk to Oprah. But, well, the thing is that I just assumed that Meghan being a film, a, a, a Hollywood actress, Mm. that it is normal for actresses to give interviews. That's what I assumed. So I just thought, you know, it's just an interview. She's an actress married to a, a prince and she's giving an interview to 
somebody who interviews people who are famous. No, no, she mentioned the firm. She mentioned that the firm have been perpetrating falsehoods about her and Meghan. She has actually accused the royal institution of, you know, spreading lies about her, you know? Uh, it, 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 for some British people, this is really serious. It's an offense. It is, it is. I, I, I disagree with it, but it is really an offense. Yeah, well, like Diana, I think Diana said the same things. Mm, mm, mm. But they didn't strip out her nationality. But I think Meghan has still got an American passport. Well, yeah, they, well, they won't strip, they won't strip Meghan, but the, the, there is apparently a petition to strip Harry. Why? And, uh, what has I, it done? Well, it, yeah, I don't know. That's what that's I, I was horrified when someone tagged me in response to my tweet to say we're signing a petition to rev revoke uh, Harry's citizenship. So are they basically saying he's not British? Is he German? I don't understand, you know? So they would revoke his citizenship because he married a black, a half black woman. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and what does this, what does this actually say? Because there's always this view, you know, when you ask people, oh, is Britain racist? They, 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 Britain is not racist, you know? Don't generalize. But if, I can't, I can't, I, 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 I don't know how I would react now if, because I don't know what sort of response uh, a daughter of mine will get if she says she wants to get married into a, 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 a white family as a result of this. You know what, it's, a, it's a, I mean, in, in, my husband's white and he's really nice. And his mother has never been nice to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> She's been so awful to me, but but we decided we, we, we love each other and therefore we're just not going to see her. Mm. <laughs> so that's what people do. Mm. You, you mm. meet someone, you fall in love and, and you think, oh, I want to spend the rest of my life with him. Mm. And because I don't have to sleep with his mother, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. and uh, yeah, so my husband and I, we've been together for a long time and, you know, his mother, you know, whatever her views are, that's that's her own problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I think and I think that Meghan is trying to do the same. Meghan is just fallen in love with Prince Harry and she she wants to have peace in her life. I, I don't understand what what wrong she's doing. You know, she's um, and people people I've seen people saying, oh, she she's just a gold digger. Mm. OK, now Harry said I saw an interview where he said that he is the one that fancied Megan. He saw her on TV mm. and he wanted to meet her. This mm. is what he gave an interview. Mm. So it wasn't he. And apparently she didn't even know who he was. So he asked to be introduced to her after seeing her in, I think, one of the films that she mm. did. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, oh, no, she came looking for her. She's a gold digger. And I was like, actually, uh, if I had known that there was a royal available and not disrespect to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right there at the palace. <laughs> interesting enough, you, you would believe it. There's one of them that I fancy, uh, Princess Anne. I just I just fancy Princess Anne. Look at what, you! Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but it will never happen. <laughs> it will never happen. She's just. <laughs> oh, bless you! <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if I was married to Princess Anne? Yeah, you, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> she, she could be your eighth wife. She could be my eighth wife. But but also, I I am I'm a bit disappointed. Maybe because he wants to be king. But the the relationship with William and Harry, from what I can gather, is the, there's some difficulty there. And he is just keeping really quiet because he wants to be king. Well, okay. This is the thing of Boncho. How many families squabble, siblings squabble? Mm. I know my siblings, we're always squabbling. Mm -hmm. You know, how many families, like brothers don't even talk to one another? Mm -hmm. Like, this is like, what we're seeing is exactly what happens in every family. Mm -hmm. You get siblings that don't talk to one another. You get siblings that are jealous of one or the other, you know? It's, it, basically, there's nothing unusual here. The two brothers are f arguing about something. And you know what? The two brothers were great pals when they didn't have partners, mm -hmm. okay? When they had partners, partners, this is what happens. Like, even you, you may have had a, a great friend when you were a young, I'm not saying you're not young. When, yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> what you mean. Go on. You know, <laughs> like when you were 
perhaps maybe before you met your beautiful wife, yeah? Mm -hmm. You probably had a friend. And mm -hmm. then when that friend got a wife and whatever. Uh, people move on. Things, mm -hmm. things move on, you mm -hmm. know? Like even there, there, there are some people, that, some of my husband's great friends who, you know, when they had partners, I thought, oh, she's not nice. I don't want to hang out with her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this is everyday stuff in people's homes. So basically what we we, we, we are doing is just, we, we are just watching them, this big, you know, <laughs> I suppose that's the price of royalty. Yeah, so, so what you're basically saying to me, if I've heard you correctly, is that, they're just an ordinary family, just like any other family on the street. It's just that they're royal. Exactly. This, 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 this is what happens in, in family. But, 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 but forget the royal bit. Don't you think that bond in terms of how painful their mother's death was in public, that that would, you know, uh, you know, for, for me, William, if I was William, I'd say, but actually, you know, Harry has been through so much pain. He's fallen in love. Yeah. And she, you should be defending his brother. I don't get that. I don't get that in any shape or form. Well, the, the, now I, I I don't I'm not a royalist, by the way, and I don't I you know the only thing that I know about the royals is from what I got from watching the Crown. And it took <laughs> such a long time to watch the Crown. Yeah. You know, like I was literally it was going to be the last thing that I watched, and finally I watched it, and I was like, oh wow, like really seriously. Mm. Well, the thing is that um, when people grow up. Mm -hmm. they, they see things from very differently and there are two brothers who have fallen out like every family mm -hmm. you know there are so many people in the UK who have grown up and they don't even talk to their siblings mm -hmm. or they fight with their siblings or they you know this is I, I don't even it's a non story but everybody is making it a story that Harry is doing this to punish or to do whatever Harry is just being a, 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 a man who has fallen in love and basically he is not you know he's he's basically what every family is yeah. at christmas why do, why do you think christmas is so traumatic for so many people <laughs> <laughs> you know? christmas is so traumatic for so many people, people because yeah because of these issues you know your your brother brings his new wife and you know she's a bit showy she's a bit and you're like who what's wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens uh, yeah, you know i don't yeah. think there's a scandal i you know i think the real scandal perhaps that is not been spoken of <laughs> oh well <laughs> you know, the, man, that, the, the man who sweats <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's kind of the scandal yeah. but uh but the thing is also prince andrew gave an interview on bbc so was that you know people what people weren't angry about that interview no, they they cop they they and it just goes to show whose side they're on. Yeah. But uh, we, we'll move on because like, I am also not a royalist, but you know I I, I have basically said I I, I find the uh, princess Anne attractive for who knows <laughs> <laughs> who knows. But um, let's talk about International Women's Day. Yes. So that's happening it's tomorrow, isn't it? Have I got that right? Uh, well, what oh. is it? Is is uh... Uh, oh, it's coming up soon. It's coming I, up I, soon. I, I should yeah. know this. You should know this. You should know <laughs> this. I, I, I am a military dictator, and I know it, and you don't. That's terrible. Yeah, it, it's soon anyway. We know it's soon. It's, coming. <laughs> it's around the corner. It's, it's around the corner. How are you celebrating? Uh, by writing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm celebrating it by writing, and hopefully, my book's gonna get published because this is very woman centered. So it's looking at. Uh, you know, women's issues, what girls, what issues they face, yep. especially in Africa, you know? Okay, it's definitely, it's definitely on the 8th of March, so it's tomorrow. So, oh, tomorrow. It's, yeah, yeah, International Women's Day, 8th of March, 2021. But so tomorrow, we're going to be celebrating the uh, women's, women's um, International Day by watching all these attacks on Megan. <laughs> oh, Megan. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And someone said, this was an opportunity for the royal family to yeah. you know modernize and to I you know, know support a black person but yeah I know. do you think women are where they need to be in terms of comedy are things changing now well definitely i'm seeing a change you know like i'm seeing a recognition of women i'm seeing 
but they still, I mean, if you look at some, some of the big problem, pro, uh, problems, <laughs> programs, comedy mm. programs on TV, they're still very male dominated. The same mm. men that have been mm. doing it for years and years mm. and years, mm. still is male dominated, mm. you know? Uh, yeah, so some of these programs, I don't know that they'll ever change, mm. but the, th the thing is that uh, Netflix has done amazing stuff for, for women comedians, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it has done so much, uh, for for us for black mm. people mm. and it, it has been a game changer and actually i was just thinking the other day like like all my life i've grown up watching uh like films and stuff like that mm. most of mm. those films were dominated by the same white men and white mm. women for years mm. and years and years and years mm. and then mm. netflix comes over and it brings us people like viola davis you know mm. Uh, it brings us like all of this just lovely stuff that I'm watching. I'm even mm. watching films from India with unknown characters and yeah. enjoying it thoroughly. Mm -hmm. and the thing is that uh, if the, 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 some of these programs don't perhaps recognize that the, that the world is changing, you know, mm. there's, there's a real danger that, you know, perhaps, you know, people, but things, things change. But I think they're still a bit slow in recognizing women. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and I, 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 I saw... I don't know if you watch Loose Women, not that I do, but I, I saw uh, it was a black, at one point it was a black women's panel, only panel, yes. you know, and yes. uh, the racist came out. <laughs> oh really, what did they say? Oh, attacking and just really attacking, saying they're not watching it anymore and, and so on and so oh. far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was so they really, say they're not watching it anymore? Well, yeah, because it had a black women's panel, you know, all black women's panel, so yeah. But it, it's definitely, it's definitely changing um yeah it's, it's definitely changing so we spoke about comedy in terms of women what about in other in other areas is, is your experience the same now that you're an auto uh in that industry well how how is it is it the same challenges the the, the publishing mm. world is exactly the same wow, <laughs> wow. it's the same as the monarchy <laughs> <laughs> seriously like they don't they have no interest whatsoever in publishing uh black people in black women mm -hmm. and if you look at the tiny percentage of people who get published mm -hmm. they're very 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 few mm -hmm. and so a, a lot of authors will have just been rejected by everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually even i was i was published by a black woman the black mm -hmm. this, this this my publisher got fed up of all these fantastic writers being turned down and being told your stories, you don't have a platform here, your stories are not going to be heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came forward and she started, she published 2020. So they wow. um, yeah, 20 comedians. She said, you, the publishers say, well, they don't, they don't get many manuscripts from black people, <laughs> which is not true. Uh, and so she said, okay, tell you what, I'm gonna find 20 in a year and I'm going to publish them in 2020. Wow. So they did, she published 20 in 20 wow. uh, comedians. So it, it, was, it was such an amazing success. So a lot of, when they saw how successful she was, a lot of publishing houses started coming forward and saying, oh, oh yeah, we will get really get on board with this because, oh yeah, it's embarrassing that we don't really publish black people mm -hmm. because they said black people don't read. <laughs> It's insane. It's the same. It's exactly the same. All these institutions are the same. They so refuse the to. The view, the view is that black people don't read. That's that's their view. That's their view. Did you see uh, that when uh, Chimamanda was being interviewed by that French journalist, mm -hmm. and she asked her whether there are, there are uh, bookshops in Nigeria? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The, the Nigeria that the, the you know have the likes of Chinna Achebe, you know Wale <laughs> Shoyinka. Yeah, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. And Chimamanda herself being a Nigerian. Yeah, and yeah, she exactly. Has, yeah, so do, do you have bookshops in Nigeria? <laughs> wow. It's incredible. Yeah, so it's the same. publishing world is no different from the comedy industry. It's the same. Mm. I mean, all these people are the same. You know, they all have the same. And what what uh, what I found out and what has been a challenge for also for, for uh, us is that even when you get to published, they still the outlets. When you, your book is being put out in the outlets, the outlets are also the same. Mm. You know, they are looking for for white men to display on their shelves and stuff like that. So, and even when when they take a book, they will put it in a shelf somewhere in some corner that it will never be seen. And then they will say, "Well, it's hardly been bought by anybody." Mm. And it's like, what? 
this is the thing there is a reluctance but you know what things the world is going to change yeah, you but, know yeah. africa is producing some amazing writers mm -hmm. you know some of my most favorite writers are, are african mm -hmm. you read some african books and you're like wow this is like your third language and you can mm -hmm. write with like this mm -hmm. it's incredible mm -hmm. and they keep shunning us and shunning us and our books will, will be out our books will keep getting published excellent excellent and you're <laughs> and you're showing the way you're you're, you're showing you're showing the way so um in terms of comedy what's the apart from the you know you're, you're an author what what are you what, what what are the plans without revealing anything are you are you going to edinburgh this year uh, who knows i don't think so <laughs> okay okay I, when I, I don't I, yeah I, I, nobody even knows what's going to happen i don't think this edinburgh is going to happen this year because mm. I don't even know that because people don't want to because Edinburgh costs a lot of money even for for comedians and also for promoters and also mm. for for, <clears throat> for the venues. Mm. So I don't know that anybody is going to take a huge undertaking only for it to be cancelled. Mm. I, I, I I well I do remember my Nicola Sturgeon. Like I, I was I was dreading. Uh, I wasn't sure because I've been I follow Scottish politics and I thought she was going to resign uh, last week because of the Alex Salmon thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I know she's tougher when it comes to the lockdown restrictions compared to the English. Yeah. She's like yeah. um, almost like a dictator, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> England, they will allow uh, comedy gigs in outdoor. She's not even allowing any of that in any shape or form. And actually, uh, there are gigs coming through now in England, but I'm not sure what's happening in Scotland. I, I have no no idea. She seems to be. Very, have you, very so people, people are booking live comedy again. Yeah, people are booking live comedy from from July, August onwards. People, some even are going as far as uh, May, April, but probably going to do it outdoor. Going to do gigs outdoor. We'll see. We'll see. We'll oh, see. Social enough. distancing. Social distancing. <laughs> yeah. But what What about What about family life? You married? You got two children, or three? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got two and a bastard. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I I have two children. I'm married. Uh, okay. Have been for a long time, and mm -hmm. yeah. So. And the children are doing well. Very well. You know, they're happy. They are, you know, not too happy about lockdown, but you know, they yeah. they're, they're kids. They're happy. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So we we just like any other family. Mm, good. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> So this this has been fantastic. You know, I often get criticized that I don't invite women to my uh, podcast. So you are the uh, third, fourth, fourth, actually fourth woman. That and how many have you done? How many of these oh, have you done? Excuse me. Uh, you, you, you shouldn't be asking me that kind of question, but I've done, <laughs> <laughs> I've done 38. I've done 38, but I've been, uh, and, yeah. And only for women. Oh, and God, only for oh women. Uh, yeah. Wait, my brother. Uh, yes, I am, and I'm, I am, I'm redressing the balance, the, the imbalance. But uh, yeah, you women are busy. I, I've been talking to you about this interview for, for for months, and you always keep telling me that you're busy. You're busy, you know. Is you're you're not. It's not like it's you're. You know, it's not like you're cooking in the kitchen. You're actually writing books, and that that's. Well, <laughs> well I'm writing actually as we speak. My my husband is cooking. Ooh, so. <laughs> oh, wow, wow! You've got it. You've got it all sourced. You've got it all sourced. <laughs> But look, no. it's, it's been it's been lovely talking to you and also catching up with you. I can't wait to you know we had a oh our last uh, the last gig we did together was a show in um, a theatre, isn't it? Yes. Oh God! I, like I was like, oh, how long? <laughs> yes, yes. That was amazing. Oh, that, that was, was fantastic. That was fantastic. Yeah, Thank you so much I, for yeah. that platform. That was, was that was just beautiful. And you know, it it's. That's where you need to be. That's yeah. where you need. That's where you need. It was. I was so happy that night. Yeah, I know. I know. So happy. I, I, it was. It was fantastic. It, it it just gelled so well. And now it was. It was uh, as a result of that. I did my. I got the next stop to take my my first comedy special. And I wish the plan, if it wasn't because of the lockdown, the plan was to do more of that. You know, just yeah. rent small theaters and just do your thing and and yeah. and, and 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 see how it pans out. But. Thank you for that. That was that was just I, I still you, you know I still have it here. I have I have I have the DVD here, you know, just have it. Goodbye, Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to do some more, but um I've just, and that's the thing. I've noticed that um a few comedians are on TV, but they're with COVID restrictions. So even yesterday I tuned into stand-up comedy club in Edinburgh. 
So they were performing live, but oh. they had a few people in, not many people in, but they were doing it through Facebook Live. So all their customers were, you know, what do you, what do you think, how do you think, because I genuinely think the way I describe it is that the lockdown has really obviously affected the comedy industries like Iraq, you know, just devastated it big time and needs to rebuild. And I genuinely believe that uh, because of the lockdown, people are doing a lot of content and bypassing gatekeepers yeah. to create their own outlet. Do you genuinely think that um, live gigs and Zoom gigs can live together? Or do you think it, it eventually Zoom gigs will die a natural death because live gigs are back? Who knows what's going to happen? But the thing is that people have already built a profile. So, so you know what? There are people who are disabled who may not be able to go to comedy clubs. There are people who perhaps may be ill. They may be not be able to go to a comedy club. Mm. You might be in a hospital bed, so you mm. can't go to a comedy club. Mm. And then you can get on Zoom. So mm. I think the clubs should, be, should wise up and mm. be streaming on zoom as well mm. so as well as having a live audience but streaming on zoom because on zoom you'll get what five thousand people easily mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, in a comedy club you can only get you know however many depending on the size of the club mm. so I, I think that the i think that people will be wise to carry on streaming comedy to, mm. to for the people you know there are also people who who live so far away that they can't actually go and to a certain comedy club it's difficult practical or maybe they don't drive there are so many reasons why people may not go to a comedy club I, and i genuinely believe because i posted something recently i was thinking about it that my view is that uh, because people have been at home for such a long time people actually need rehabilitation to be released back into the community you know i know <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I miss being on stage, uh, but I don't actually miss driving across the Oh, <laughs> oh, those late nights and eating bad food and then no. wondering whether you did well or whether you're going to be rebooked and then the adrenaline and before you can and you, sleep. You, 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 and then you finish, it's midnight. You have to drive for three and a half hours and you're like, oh my God, like I, God save me. I was actually speaking to a comedy promoter who wanted to know whether I was available for a gig. And he was saying, oh, he will let me know because he's planning it. And then when I looked at how far it was, I said, do yeah. I really want to do this again? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that trouble was just like, it was driving me mad. Mm. And the thing is, and then you think, God, I, you get home and then, oh, tomorrow I've got to travel to somewhere else. I've got to travel to somewhere else. Mm. International travel is not so bad mm. because before the lockdown, I was in the Netherlands and Belgium and mm. all of that. Mm. Uh, uh, and that, that was nice because, you know, like they would pick us up from the hotel and they would take us to the venue. Mm -hmm. They would, and that was, that, that I can do. But all of this driving myself to Leeds and then Bristol the next night and Plymouth the next night is just, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, it's hard. Maybe it's age, maybe it's age. Maybe for me it is age. I, I, I genuinely need to think carefully when gigs are given to me, uh, but it's, it's all good. Look, it's been, uh, I know your husband is waiting to serve you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's been it's been a pleasure. I will it's let you know pleasure. when I release the podcast. Uh, but look, it's been fantastic. You look well. You look. Oh, you look. You. I have to say, you look better than when you were gigging. You look really. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm rested. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we and we all have rested, you know. So thank you so much for uh, giving me the honor and. Uh, uh, it's it's been it's been fantastic. We've heard about your book. We've heard about your in a way a little bit about your plans. Yeah, we've heard about Kenya. It's been it's been an education. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. And actually, I've got some good news for you. The good news is this: this morning when I woke up, when I was checking um, the countries that have downloaded my podcast, North Korea. I have fans in North Korea. I, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I I, I just saw it this morning. And I saw. Not uh, podcast downloaded in North Korea. That's the fifth, wow. the fifth dictatorial regime that has, has downloaded my podcast. That's so amazing. That's, no, it's a good thing. <laughs> so it's been downloaded in twenty-seven countries right now. So it's been good. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. But it's been yeah, it's been fantastic. You're you're dominating the world. Well, I I'm doing my best to you know get. Of course, the Western media will not do my propaganda for me. Yeah, they won't give me a platform. <laughs> so I need to find a way. Uh, and yeah. I'm using the podcast and I've got lots of other guests, but look, don't let me take any more of your time. Uh, I, I genuinely thought that the Megan thing was happening this evening. I was looking forward to it, but it will have to be tomorrow. Double check, double check. 
Yeah, just but look, double check. look, you take care of yourself and greet your lovely husband. That man is a I good man, a very, very good man. Very, very mm -hmm. good man. I can't believe he's serving you, but that is. <laughs> <laughs> Sending my love and regards. Thank you very much, Thank Jambi. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 I've stopped. Hope you hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>